hello guys and welcome to another beginner web development project tutorial in this video we are going to build a fully responsive multi-page education or school website using html css and javascript now we are going to build the home page as you see here we are going to build the about page as well we will be building the courses page and lastly we will be building the contact page okay which is going to be fully functional and that means people can actually send us message through the contact form on this website and we will be able to get those messages in our email and i'm going to show you all that in this tutorial now before i walk you through the finished project let me tell you exactly what you'll be learning throughout the tutorial so by the end of this video you will know how to use css variables to easily customize your website you're also going to learn how to use css grid and css flexbox to easily align items on your website you're going to learn how to use block element modifier or bam for naming your classes and to easily achieve our responsive design we will be using css units like viewport height viewport width fractions and percentages so you are going to know how to use all these units in this tutorial we will be creating a fully functioning contact form and as i said people can actually send emails through this form on this website okay through the form on this website we will be using css transitions and css keyframes for our animations we are going to do some animations on this website so we are going to use css keyframes and css transitions we will be using swiper js for our testimonial section so that we have some slides for the testimonials we're also going to learn how to use css media queries to create responsive design for different breakpoints or different screen sizes so this and many more things that you're going to learn in this tutorial now let me walk you through the finished project so here on the home page we have a nav bar with the logo on the left and then the nav items on the right we have home about courses and then contacts so these are the various pages that we are going to have on this website and we are going to explore the other pages as well here on the header section we have this title we have the subtitle and then a call to action button we have this image here as well and notice how the nav bar changes style on scroll okay and i'm going to teach you how to do that as well in this video scrolling down we have our category section with these cars for the different categories that we have we have this call to action button here as well and here we have our popular courses okay and notice the cool over effect that we have here so these are our popular courses here we have our frequently asked questions section okay so these are some frequently asked questions and here we have our testimonials section okay which we are going to use swiper.js to create okay we're going to design everything and then use swiper.js for the slides and lastly we have the footer section down here as well all right so this is the home page now let's go to the about page quickly so here is the about page with some achievements okay scrolling down we have this team section and notice how the images are desaturated but on hover they are going to be saturated okay and we are going to have the socials for the various team members that we have we will be using css animations and transitions for this over effect okay so that is all for the about page now let's go to the courses page and that is very simple we have some courses here okay so this courses page is very very simple and lastly we have the contacts page okay so we have some contact details here and then we have a contact form which actually works okay so here i'm going to enter my first name last name 
so that is my email and i'm going to enter a random message okay so this is the message i'm trying to send this email is going to be the sender's email and here i'm going to send this message and notice we have to pass this recapture okay to make sure we are not robots and that is going to help prevent spam all right so let me go to my email and see whether the message has been submitted and here it is okay we have the message so let's see this is the name i entered okay this is the first name i entered this this was the last name this is the email i entered and then the random message i typed in okay so everything is working smoothly all right now let's see the responsiveness on mobile phones and tablets all right so this is how our website is going to look on mobile phones okay so this is how our website is going to look on mobile phones okay so there is our testimonial section our frequently asked questions section is looking great we have our courses section or our popular courses section and then we have our category section here as well okay and there's the header section and we have this cool animation for the nav menu okay and i'm going to show you i'm going to teach you how to do this animation as well in this tutorial now let's explore the about page and this is how the about page looks like on the mobile phones this is how the about page looks like on mobile phones okay the footer section looks great as well courses page so this is the courses page everything is looking great now let's explore the contact page as well let's see how the contact page looks like and this is how the contact page looks okay everything is looking great now let's go back to the home page and let's see how this website looks on ipad okay or on tablets so this is how the website is going to look on tablets let's check out the other pages so this is going to be the about page this is the about page all right let's see the courses page this is the courses page and lastly let's check the contacts page okay so this is going to be the contacts page all right so this is how the contacts page is also going to look like all right so this is what we are going to build in this tutorial i have severe code today my voice is not great but we have a lot to do so let's get started so here in my project folder i have this images folder which contains all the images that we are going to use throughout this project all right so these are all the images that we are going to use okay and i'm going to leave a link for the images and then the live demo of the website as well i'm going to leave a link for the source code the images and then the live demo of the website and that is going to be for my patreons so if you think um, i deserve some support for these projects consider becoming a patron and you are going to get those extras all right so we are going to this is a multi-page website right so we are going to create all the pages that we are going to need first let's create the home page okay so that is going to be the index html let's create the next page which is going to be the about let's create the courses page and lastly we are going to create the contact page okay so contact html all right so i have my pages let me create a folder for the css okay so we are going to create our styles css okay so our style sheet and this is going to be the main style sheet file let's create another one for 
the um, contact so contact.css and let's create one for courses okay so courses css okay so these are the css files and then the html um, files now we are going to write some javascript as i said earlier so let's create this file okay so that is the only javascript file that we are going to have all right so i'm going to open this project in vs code all right so we are in vs code and with vs code i'm going to use two extensions okay okay so you're going to need preview on web server if you're using a different text editor like atom or anything else you may want to search emit emit actually comes with vs code so we are not going to install that or i am not going to install that now we are going to start with our navbar okay but with emit i'm going to do exclamation tab and it is going to give me this boilerplate and the title for this project is going to be responsive multi-page education website using html css and javascript okay so that is my title and i'm going to link my style sheet okay so let's go into our css folder and then get our styles.css and we have everything set all right so let's start with our navbar let's put our navbar inside a nav tag which is an html5 semantic tag and we are going to wrap everything in a div with a class of container this is going to be a general class so some sections of the website is going to have the same container class okay and it is going to put everything in the middle of the page and you're going to understand that when we get to the css okay now let's give this another class of nav underscore underscore container which is bem so this is the block elements modifier that we are using okay bem all right so this nav container class is going to be specific to this nav bar now i'm going to do tab and we have the div with these classes all right so first of all let's have our logo okay and that is going to be inside the link and this will bring us to the home page and this is going to be the logo from there we are going to have an added list of the nav menu items let me actually give this a class of nav underscore underscore menu and let's have our nav items okay so the first one is going to be for our home page or it's going to be the home page okay and make sure you put this in a link okay so that we can actually click this and it will bring us to the page that we want okay so this is going to be the home let me duplicate this a few times so we have home about so this is going to say about and it is going to take us to the about page okay we have courses and then we have the contact page so contact html let me actually open this in our default browser okay so i'm going to right click and then launch on browser all right so this is our project okay and this is the finished project let me put this side by side so that we see what's going on all right so from our nav menus we are going to have some buttons and those buttons are only going to be available or visible on tablets and in mobile phones okay so we are going to have the hamburger button and then we are going to have the close button as well or the close icon so let me quickly go to icon scouts okay that is the icons resource that we are going to use and let me quickly grab the icon scout cdn okay so um icon scout cdn let me grab the cdn here copy okay so that is the icon scout cdn now we are going to grab the hamburger and then the close icons let me scroll down 
view all icons and here i'm going to search the menu the menu icon okay so this is the icon that i want that is the hamburger icon and i'm going to put that in a button tag let me give this an id open menu btn okay and i'm going to paste the icon that i just copied all right let me duplicate this this is going to be for the close and i'm going to copy and then paste that okay so i'm going to replace that with this replace and now let's see what we have all right so we have our two buttons which are going to be only available on tablets and mobile devices all right so we are done with our nav markup okay so now let's head to our style sheet let's head to our css and give our website some styling now every browser comes with some default styles or give some elements some default styles which we, we don't want okay so we don't want the margins the default margins that we have on a page we don't want these underlines with the links or the anchor tags we don't want these bullets for the li's okay or our list items so here we are going to override those styles we are going to set everything to be zero or none right so here i'm going to grab every element on the web page and set the margin to zero okay every element should have a pattern of zero a border of zero some inputs have borders so we are going to set the borders for those to be zero and outline to be zero as well okay and notice everything is gone all right now you can target the links here and then remove the text decoration okay so we can do that but i just want to put everything inside this okay so the text decoration for everything is going to be none let me show you let me remove this margin and pattern so that you see okay so the bullets are still there so we are going to remove those so that is the list style let's remove them okay let's set them to none and finally i'm going to set the box size to be border box okay so that is the general styles that i want to have before we proceed all right and as i said earlier we are going to use css variables okay and that is going to help us uh, easily customize our web page okay and it is going to also prevent us from repeating ourselves all right so to declare a variable in css we need two hyphens or you do two hyphens and then the name of that variable this is going to be color primary and then the value okay and the value for this color is going to be 6 c 6 3 ff okay so that is our color primary and i have some more variables that we are going to use so i'm just going to paste those okay i'm going to paste them in so we have our color primary which has this value we have color success we have color warning we have danger and so on okay so these are the colors that we are going to use throughout this project so for instance if i come back if i don't like this color and i come back to change it every element on the page with this color is going to change as well okay and that is going to save us a lot of time customizing our page all right so down here too we have some variables which i'm going to explain as we move on and we have this variable as well okay so i'm going to get to these variables later on so let's move on to give our page some custom styles first let me set the font family for the body i don't want these fonts i don't want this font so i'm going to go to google fonts to grab some fonts there so let's go to google fonts and the fonts we are searching is Montserrat. okay that is what we are going to use and i'm going to grab from the 300 font weight okay so the normal 300 i'm going to grab the regular which is the 400 font weight as well i'm going to grab the medium which is 500 the semi bold bold 
um let's see let me just grab everything okay all right so i'm done and we can either copy this and paste in our html or we can import it inside our css okay either should work but i prefer the html so i'm just going to copy this go back to my markup that is the html and let me leave a comment here okay all right and i'm going to paste this okay so that is our monitoring font and here let me actually go back to the google fonts page and then copy this okay and i'm going to paste and now we should have our fonts change okay let me show you let me cut so this was the previous font and now we have that change to the font we just copied that is a monserrate font we are going to set the color to be color white so the color is going to be white and then the background is going to be color bg okay save and we have this so this is how you use css variables okay so we could just copy we could just use this and it is going to work so we could just do this and anytime we need this color we could just repeat ourselves but for easy customization we just use the variables okay so when we later don't need this we can just come back change this and every element with this color is going to change okay the color here is white and then the background for this page this page is going to be the bg color or the color bg variable all right so let's move on to the container okay notice we had a class of container and it's going to be a general class for many sections for this website and it is going to help us center our web page horizontally okay it is going to put everything in the middle let me quickly show you all right notice how we have this margin on the right on the left side and then the right side that is with the help of the container class okay so that is what we are going to do so here we are going to set the width for this container to be the variable container width lg and then the margin is going to be zero auto which is going to put it in the middle okay so this variable is what we have up here okay so this is going to be on large devices it's going to be 76 percent and we are going to change it when we get to the media queries for tablets and then we will also change it for the media queries for small phones uh, small screens which is phones okay actually let me i'm going to make this easy from the container let's move on and give every section tag a pattern of six rem for the top and bottom and then zero for the left and right okay so six rem is going to be six times 16 pixels one rem is equal to 16 pixels all right so six rem here is going to be six times 16 pixels every h2 in a section tag is going to be text aligned to the center and they are going to have a margin bottom of four rem okay and we are going to understand these classes or these styles as we proceed and it is essential to have these so that we we don't keep repeating ourselves okay now let's style every h1 h2 h3 h4 and then h5 so okay let's give them a line height of 1.2 and i'm going to target each of them so that every h1 is going to have a font size of 2.4 rem every h2 is going to have a font size of 2 rem every h3 is going to have a font size of 1.6 rem and every h4 is going to have a font size of 1.3 rem okay good now i'm going to give every link or every anchor tag a color of color white which is the variable we have up top okay so this fff that is the color white variable that we are using all right from there i'm going to give every image every img tag is going to 
or every image is going to have a width of 100% its parent width okay they are also going to be displayed block and object fit is going to be cover and we are going to have some button styles okay we are going to give some buttons a btn class let's give them a background of color white a color of color black which is zero 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 that is also up top which is this color okay so that is the color black let's give them a pattern of one rem two rem so one rem for the top and bottom and then two rem for the left and right border of one pixel solid transparent and then font width let's give them font width of 500 which is medium notice we have a border here which is transparent and the reason why actually let me just show you so we are going to have a hover effect for the buttons as well okay so for the btn class we are going to have a hover effect and for that we are going to change the background to be transparent and the color that is the text inside of it is going to have a color of white the border color this time is going to be the variable color white okay actually we don't have any button here but you are going to understand this once we move forward and for our buttons to have a smooth hover effect we are going to set a transition for them okay so transition here is going to be the variable transition that we have up top okay i'm going to explain these transitions as well as we move on now let's move on and then some buttons are going to have a btn primary class 2 okay so those are going to have a background of color danger and the text is going to be color white and that is all for our general styles okay that is all for our general styles now we are going to move on to our nav bar let's quickly do that let me leave a comment here A nav bar is inside a nav tag so let's get that and here i'm going to just give it a red background so that you see what's going on so that's our nav bar i'm going to give it a width of 100 viewport width and 100 viewport width means the entire width of the screen okay so no matter the device that we are viewing this website on our nav bar is going to take the entire width of that screen so that is 100 viewport width now let's move on and then give this nav by height of 5 rem okay and 5 rem means 5 times 16 pixels so 5 times 16 in this case is going to be 80 pixels so if i should change this to 80 pixels it should give us the same results okay so that is rems for you all right and from there i'm going to position this nav bar fixed so it's going to be fixed on the web page so even if we scroll we are going to have our nav bar okay we are going to still see our nav bar and it is going to be zero from the top okay so it's always going to be at the top now i'm going to set the z index to be 11 okay so that it's always on top of everything on the page okay you are going to understand z index as we move on from there we are going to have our container okay so our nav container class which is the class specific to the nav bar which is this class let's style that so for that we are going to give it a, a height of 5 frame which is 100 percent of the parent let's display flex and then justify content to be spaced between okay all right so that is what we have i'm going to align items to the center as well okay and for now or on desktop or on large devices we don't want these buttons okay these buttons are only going to be available on tablets and mobile phones so let me get those okay so the buttons here are going to be displayed none on large devices okay all right so from there let's see what we can do let's get the nav items let's get these and we give the ul or the unadded list a class of nav menu so let's get the nav menu class and display flex okay 
we are also going to align items to the center and give them a gap or a margin between them is going to be four rem all right so we have this let me make those 0 0.9 rem and we are going to have some hover effects as i said on the links so on hover i'm going to change the color to be the color bg2 okay which is um, let's see which is this this hex code so that is the color we are going to get on hover and this is where transitions come in okay so notice how the change from the white to that color is very sharp i don't want that okay so i'm going to come up here set the transition so here we can do all 400 milliseconds ease okay it's going to take the duration is going to be 400 milliseconds and then the easing or the timing function here is going to be ease you can do linear you can do ease out ease in and all that but i'm going to use ease okay so now we should have a smoother um change okay i clicked on that that is why um it took us to the other page but we have a smoother hover effect okay you can make this three seconds um three s let me save and it is going to take three seconds to change why am i clicking it let me refresh Okay, so it's going to take three seconds to change from the white to this color. Okay, but I want it a little faster. So I'm going to do 400 milliseconds. All right, so now we have this. Now, this is the exact value that I have here. Okay, the exact style that I have here. Okay, which is this variable, the transitions variable. So here I'm just going to remove this and then use that variable instead. All right. So we still have that effect. Okay. And I don't want the red background anymore. So here I'm actually going to remove the background and set it to transparent. We are only going to have the background change when we scroll. Before we even move on to the header section, we are going to achieve the desktop version of the whole website that's this home page we are going to create the desktop version completely before we move on to making it responsive or making it look good on other devices right all right so let's move on to this header section so as you see this header section is going to have a left side which is going to contain or which is going to have this contents with a button and then we are going to have the right side which is going to have this image okay so that is the simple um, alignment that we are going to make so let's go to our markup and here the header section is going to be put inside this header tag which is an html5 semantic tag and we are going to wrap everything inside a div with a class of container and we are going to have another class which is going to be once again specific to this header and we are going to have the left so header underscore underscore left and also we are going to have the header right okay which is going to have the image so for the left side we are going to have an h1 and we are going to have a paragraph and we are going to just do let's do lorem 20 okay now we are going to have the last thing we are going to have here is the call to action button okay so we are going to have a link and this is going to take us to the courses html page okay the courses page and let's give this some classes so we are going to give it that btn class that we created in the general styles in the css and let's also give it that bit uh, btn primary class okay okay so we have the button now let's head to the right section and this right section is only going to have the image so here i'm going to put it inside the div with a class of 
header right image and now let's get that image okay so i'm going to go to my images folder and then get the header svg okay this is an svg image and that is all for this header section okay and that is all for the header section i'm going to leave a comment here end of header and now let's head back to our style sheet and then style this let me copy this comments and this style is going to be for the header section all right so let's get the header tag and i'm going to position this relative okay and then push it down you can see there as the header section is under the navbar okay so here from the top i'm going to push it the height of the navbar which is the five frame okay remember we gave our navbar a height of five frame so i'm pushing it exactly by that okay so from there let me actually set the overflow to hidden and give it come on hidden and give it a height of 70 viewport height let me give it a margin bottom of five frame as well all right that is our header styles now let's get the header container header underscore underscore container and i'm going to display um let's see let me make this a little bigger I'm going to display grid, set the grid template columns to 1fr, 1fr, okay. So I'm going to split it into two equal parts, okay. So this is going to be 50% and this is going to be another 50%, okay. So one fraction, one fraction, all right. I'm going to align items, that is for, um, vertical alignment. I'm going to align that center and then give them a gap okay so i'm going to leave a space between them and i'm going to make that five frame all right now it's still at the top so i'm going to make the height a hundred percent okay of the parent which is going to be 70 viewport height okay so we have this now let's tell the left side okay so i'm just going to grab the paragraph so header left and then the p tag let me actually shrink this so that you see what's going on i'm going to set the margin for that to be one rem for the top zero for the left and right and then 2.4 rem for the bottom okay so we have some good space in there and that is all for the header section okay now let's move on to the next section which is going to be and notice we have some background okay this background texture we are going to do that getting to the end of the video okay so the next se section here is going to be this category section so let's quickly move on to that so let's go to the markup all right so this is going to be a section with a class of categories okay we are going to have a container general container class and a container class specific to this so categories container and here we are going to have a, a left side and then the right side as well okay so categories left duplicated and we are going to have the right side as well all right now for the left side we are going to have an h1 and then a paragraph okay let's do lorem 30. what it says is not really necessary here so that that is what we have so far okay so that is for the left side last thing we are going to have there is going to be a button so let me give this a class of btn and it is going to say learn more Okay, so that is all for the left side. Now let's get to this right side. Here we are going to have the the cars that we have. Okay, so this cars we are going to have these. Each of them is going to be inside an article tag. Okay, with a class of category. And for each, notice we have 
we have an icon a heading and then the text a little description of the category okay so here we are going to have a span with a class of category icon okay that is going to have the icon we are going to have an h5 for the name of the category and this is going to be blockchain blockchain and some description of that category let's put that inside a p tag and then do lorem 10 that should be good all right so let me get the icon real quick okay so the first one is the bitcoin icon let me close this google fonts so let's search bitcoin or crypto whatever i'm going to get this one that is going to be the icon and i'm going to paste it here let's see whether we have it all right so we have that so that is all for the first category and notice we have six of them we have six categories here so i'm just going to duplicate this a few times and to copy duplicate it a few times okay so we have five and then six let me leave some spaces all right so i just finished with the nursery changes that is the icons and then the titles okay so i just finished with all the six cars so let's go to the css i'm going to copy this comment it's going to be for the categories okay so here i'm going to select the class categories and i'm going to give that a background of the color bg1 i'm going to use the one okay so that is the background let me get the h1 okay, so categories h1 line heights i'm going to give that one let's give it a margin bottom of three rem now let's move on to the container categories container i'm going to display grid and then the grid templates columns is going to be 40 percent for the left side and then 60 for the right side okay all right so we have 40 60 going to give them a gap of 4 rem so there is enough space between them and even before we start the cars i want to have some space in here on the left side okay so let me categories left and then the paragraph i'm going to give that a margin of one one room for the top zero for the left and right and then three room for the bottom okay i'm going to target the right side display grid the grid template columns is going to be three one frs okay so three fractions and let me give them some gap okay so let me give a gap of 1.2 rem okay now let's target the individual categories so that is a class of category okay which is singular we are going to give them a background of the color bg2 let's give them a pattern of 2 rem a border radius of 2 rem and a transition okay we are going to have some hover effect all right so the transition is there because we are going to have a hover effect okay so on hover we are going to set a box shadow of zero for the x axis three rem for the y axis three rem for the blur and the color is going to be an rgba okay it's going to be black with some transparency um rgba okay so we have the hover effect all 
and i think these cars are overflowing to the right side okay they're overflowing to the right if you if, if you can see you can see there's no wall aligned okay so um let's see i'm going to uncomment this and now it is in place as it showed so let's see should we leave it like this or i can just get the left side categories left and then give it a margin right of two rem okay so that we just have some space between them we can even increase that let me increase that to four rem and then remove this okay all right so that looks good nice now um let's see i'm going to give the category section a height i'm going to give it a fixed height of 29 right so that this overlaps like that okay just like we have in the finished project okay now let's move on to styling the icons all right so from here we are going to get the Now remember we gave each icon here a class of category underscore icon so here we are going to give them a background for now we are, they are all going to have a color primary for the background let's give them some padding 0 0.7 rem and a border radius of 0 0.9 rem okay right now let's target the h5 so category h5 so for them let's give them some margin so a margin of two rem for the top zero for the left and right and then one rem for the bottom okay and then let's get the piece as well the paragraphs category and then the paragraph we are going to reduce the font size to 0 0.85 rem all right so that is that now i want to have different background colors for the different um category icons that we have okay so i'm going to use the pseudo selector here and here i'm going to get the second one okay so the nth child and i'm going to get the second one which is this i'm going to change the background to color danger oh sorry i should get the icon so category icon okay is the icon that i want to change all right so let me just duplicate this and do it for the rest so that is the second one the third one um let's see let me make reference to the finished project so i'm going to get the third the fourth and the fifth the sixth one is going to remain the same the color for the icon is going to the background color for the icon is going to remain the same so fourth and then fifth right the third one is going to have a success color that is green so color success the fourth one is going to have a warning color which is yellow color warning and this is going to be danger i think so let's see oh that is success as well so the fifth one is going to have a color success and we have it okay um now everything looks good everything looks great and we are actually done with this category section right but i want to have the now by change when we scroll okay I want to have it change when we scroll so that is going to be done using javascript so let's head to our javascript file actually let's go back to our html and then link that file okay so i'm going to link my javascript file here and to make sure it is actually linked i'm just going to do an alert and it is linked okay 
so I'm just going to remove this all right so here I'm going to get the window okay the window object and then add an event listener here and it's going to be a scroll event and here we are going to have this anonymous function and here let's get the nav bar okay and, and it's inside a nav tag and that is the only nav tag we have on the page and we are going to toggle a class which we haven't created yet and i'm going to call this class window scroll okay so whenever we scroll we are going to call this class right here is greater than zero okay so when we scroll then we want to have that style okay we want to toggle the styles for this okay which is this class we want to toggle this class right here so that is going to be here let me just put it here and then actually let me leave a comment okay so that is the class that we are going to toggle we are just going to change the background to color primary and we are going to give the nav by a box shadow okay so zero on the x axis one room for the y axis two room for the blur and an rgba black with some transparency okay let me actually make this 0 0.2 okay so when we scroll we have this then you can actually tweak this value okay you can tweak this value here you can make it so that when we scroll 100 pixels down okay then we have it okay but i want it immediately we scroll so i'm just going to make it zero all right so we have it immediately all right so that is that now the next section is going to be the courses section okay our popular courses section so let me let's go to our markup a section with a class of courses okay and inside we are going to have the general container class and a courses container class as well all right now inside that even before that let me have an h2 here okay this h2 let me have that here and here inside the container class we are going to have the different courses okay so each course is going to be inside an article tag with a class of course so first we are going to have the image so that is going to be a, let, let me put that in a div okay a div with a class of course image and i'm going to get the image from the images folder um, course one that is the first image we are going to have the title which is going to be inside an h4 responsive social media website ui design that is the title we are going to have some description so that is going to be inside a paragraph tag let me do lorm 16 okay okay so 16 is good and then let's see we are going to have the button okay so a link let's just make it take us to the courses page okay and here the link is going to have a class a class of btn and btn primary and it is going to say learn more okay learn more and that is it okay that is for a course now we are going to have three so i'm just going to duplicate this one two let me leave some space between them and i'm going to change the image for them okay so the second one is going to have the second image we're going to have the third one let's see what we have 
okay so this is the first one the second one and then the third one okay now i'm going to change the um the titles as well okay so the second one is going to be that is the title for the second one the third one is going to be okay so that is for the third one okay so the titles changed the images changed i think we have enough for the markup now let me copy this comment paste it down here changes to the courses okay so this is the end of the courses markup so let's head back to our css going to copy a comment and then paste i'm going to go back and then um let's see from the h4 or the title from the title to the button i'm going to put that inside a class of course info okay so i'm going to do that for all the three of them okay all, all three of them let me just paste and then the last one is going to be this so let me just copy this all right okay so that is for the markup for the popular courses okay all right so that's what we have let's go to the css let me give you the margin top of 10 rem okay as you can see this is too close to the category section let me shrink this so margin top will bring this down all right now let's get the container so courses container I'm going to display grid the grid templates columns is going to be repeat three times one fr okay so we have them now let's give some space between them so a gap of two rem and then now let's move on and install each course okay each class of course background color bg1 going to text align to the center give them a border of one pixel solid transparent okay it's only going to show when we hover okay so that is why it's transparent for now all right so we have that now let me get the info the info class okay so course info i'm going to give them a pattern of two rem okay so now we have this now um let's see let me get the p course info and then the p tag i'm going to give that a margin of 1.2 rem for the top zero for the left and right and then two rem for the bottom good we have some decent space in there and i'm going to decrease the phone size okay to 0.9 rem all right so we have this now as i said i want to have some hover effect okay so on hover of each course i want to have the background to be transparent and then the book um, the border color the border color here is going to be color primary okay so it is transparent here but on hover we are going to set that to color primary um let's see border color transparent here so here should be hover okay we are changing it on hover okay now this is too fast so we have to set a transition of all no let's use the variable transition okay all right so we have some cool hover effects with the courses okay all right so that is all for this courses section let's move on to the next section which is going to be this frequently asked questions section right here okay 
So let's move on to that. Let's go to our markup. So this is going to be a section with a class of frequently asked questions. Okay. We are going to have a container class and then frequently asked questions container. Come on, I can't type today. All right. So we have that. Now we are going to have each frequently asked question inside an article tag with a class of FAQ. Okay. And then inside of it, we are going to have the, let me quickly show you. So for each one, we are going to have this plus icon. Okay. And then we are going to have the question. Okay. The question and then the answer. Okay. So um, let's go back. So inside of this, we are going to have the icon, which is going to be the frequently asked question icon. And then we are going to have the question and then the answer. Okay. So question answer. For the icon, that is going to be a plus. So let me search plus here. Grab that and then paste it in. And then the question and then the answer. The question is going to be inside an H4 for me. Sorry. So that is the first question. And then the answer for that is going to be lorem. Um, let's do 30. Okay, so that is going to be the answer corresponding to the question. All right. So now one frequently asked question is done okay so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to duplicate it a few times um let's do 10 times okay so one two three four five six seven um eight i think that is 10 right i didn't count it well so um i have a severe cold today okay i have Qatar today that is why my voice is sounding weird all right let me give some space so that you see this clearly okay and then this is all okay this is all for the markup now let me copy this um come down paste that and this is going to be the end of the frequently asked questions Let's head to the CSS and style that. All right, let's style this quickly. Um, I think I forgot to add this. Okay, so in a finished project, notice we have this frequently asked questions in an H two so let me scroll up and above the container we are going to have an h2 all right okay so we have that all right so let's start this okay so let's get the frequently asked questions and then give it a background of color bg1 let's give it a box shadow and this box shadow is going to be an inset okay so it's going to be as if it is below this and then this okay so it's going to be inside i don't know you see you see what i'm doing so you see what's happening <laughs> you see what's happening so um, so this is going to be an inset and then zero on the x axis, zero on the y axis, three rem for the blur, and then we are going to have it be a black color, okay, with some transparency, and it's going to be fifty percent transparent. All right, so we have that. Without the inset, this is going to be on top of this, okay, as you can see here. 
so if you want you can make it like this you can just remove the inset and it's, it's going to be like this okay but i want it to look like it's inside okay it's below this so that is why i have that inset all right let's move on and then grab the container so fax container i'm going to display this grid and then the grid template columns is going to be one fr or one fr and i'm going to give a gap between them now let me grab each frequently asked question and give it a pattern of two okay i'm going to display flex and align items to the center let me give some gap between them as well 1.4 rem when you set the height to be fit content give it a background of color primary now let me set the cursor to pointer okay i want this to look clickable so the cursor should be pointer now i'm going to select the h4 so frequently asked question and then the h4 font size here is going to be one rem i'm going to set the line height to 2.2 now let me get the icon so the frequently asked question icon to flex start okay and then the font size i'm going to increase it to 1.2 rem now let me get the paragraph okay In this paragraph here um let me get that so frequently asked question p I'm going to give it a margin top of 0 0.8 rem good um margin top okay margin top now i don't want the answers to be showing like this okay i don't want everything i don't want this frequently asked questions to be presented like this so what i'm going to do is display all the paragraphs notice the answers are inside the paragraph right so i'm going to display that none okay and any frequently asked question with a class okay with another class of open is going to have the paragraph show okay so here i'm going to say frequent any frequently asked question with another class of open should have the paragraph displayed block all right so what i'm going to do is to go back to the markup and then give any of this i can give any of this frequently asked questions another class of open and when i save you see that class or that frequently asked question has the paragraph or the answer oh, um, showing all right if i should put it on the third one the third one is going to have that okay so that is how we are going to use javascript to toggle this okay so let me quickly actually let's do this right now so let's go to the javascript why can i type today oh god all right so here i'm going to get all the frequently asked questions okay so document the query selector document i'm actually going to use query selector all because we are selecting multiple elements they are inside an article with this class okay all of them have this class okay so that is what we are selecting and it is going to get all the frequently asked questions since they all have this class okay as you can see all right so we get them and then now we are going to look through them okay i'm going to look through them so that i can add event list now on each of them so here for each of them i'm going to add an event listener so i'm going to get each of them and then add an event listener which is going to be a click event on click i'm going to run this function so on click of them i want to toggle the open class that we styled okay so the open class that i talked about we want to toggle that so frequently asked question dot class list dot toggle i'm going to toggle a class called open and that should do the magic okay so let's 
try this out okay so we have that we can toggle our frequently asked questions now notice the icon does not change okay when the answer is showing i want the icon to change to a minus all right so um, let's see what we can do here so here let me leave a comment let me get the icon inside the frequently asked question okay and we gave the icons a class of frequently asked question icon right and here we are going to get the i we are going to get this okay so we are getting the eyes here and then we are going to say if the icon class name is equal to you can you can use class list contains but i am going to use class name so if it is a plus okay if it is a plus then we want to change that to a minus okay so the icon class name is going to be equal to what we just copied but now we are going to change that to a minus okay so let's try and we have it changed to a minus okay but now we can change it to um, a plus we can change it to a plus when the answer is not showing it should be a plus so let's go back and then let's put an else else we want to change it back to a plus and i hope this makes sense okay it is very um, simple to do but i just hope it makes sense okay so our frequently asked question toggle is working perfectly all right so we are done with our frequently asked questions section okay so the next section that we are going to tackle is going to be this testimonials section that we have okay so let's move on to that So this is the end of the frequently asked questions now we are heading to the testimonials unlike the other sections this section is going to have a class of container and another class of testimonials container and inside of this we are going to have an h2 that says students testimonials and now we are going to have a wrapper around the testimonials okay let me just put that inside a div so each testimonial is going to be an article or is going to be inside an article tag with a class of testimonial which is singular okay and inside each testimonial this is how we are going to structure it okay so we are going to have the avatar the testimonial info which is going to have the name and then the title and then we are going to have the testimonial body okay who is going to have who is going to be this card all right so that is how we are going to do it now let me go back so we are going to have the avatar who is going to have the image okay so let me go into my images and grab the first avatar all right after that we are going to have the testimonial info so that is going to have the name of the person and then a title let me put that inside a small tag from there we are going to have the testimonial body okay so a class of testimonial body all right so that is our first testimonial let's see what we have okay so this is our first testimonial now for time's sake i'm just going to duplicate this one two three four five and then change the name and then the titles um let me just change the names and then the images okay or the avatars so this is the second one this is going to be an next achiever and he is a web developer okay let me change the third one 
the name is going to be a demo quest who is a student let me just leave that let me change the fourth one the name is going to be hijab into um who is a model okay let's leave it as student okay that's the fifth one all right so let's see what we have let me leave some spaces between them so yeah let's see what we have and we have this okay beautiful so let's move on to the css and give this some styling So here let's grab the testimonials container okay so testimonials container class that we have and um, let's see all right now here i'm going to set the overflow x to hidden I'm going to position this relative give it a margin bottom of five frame right now let's move on to the testimonial each testimonial let me get each testimonial give that a pattern top of two rem i'm going to get the avatar give it a width of six rem a height of six rem as well border radius of 50 percent to make it a cycle I'm going to set overflow to heading let's see let me give it a margin zero for the top auto for the left and right and then one room for the bottom okay so we have this let me give it a border of one room solid color bg let me do one okay uh border all right so we have our avatar now let me get the info okay so the info has the name and then the title so testimonial info i'm going to text align that to the center okay and then i'm going to get the testimonial body i'm going to give that a background of color primary a pattern of two rem a margin top um let's do three rem now i want to have this okay i want to have this that we have here okay in this so for that i'm going to use the before pseudo elements for the testimonial body okay i'm going to use the before pseudo elements and let me set the content to be nothing or empty the content is going to be empty but we are going to display its block okay i'm going to give it a background for now so that you see let me give it a width of three rem same for the height come on so that you see what we have okay so we have it here but i want it here so i'm going to position this absolute from the left is going to be 50 percent and from the top is going to be negative 1.5 rem okay half the height so negative half the height and now we can see it and that is because we didn't set the parents which is the testimonial body we have to set a position of relative all right now i want this to be to look like a triangle right so i'm going to rotate it okay so i'm going to use the transform property and I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. I could just change this color to color primary. And we have it. I want it to look like this. Okay. To have that gradient. So I'm going to use linear gradient here. So it's going to start from 
transparent to um transparent to and then go to color primary again and now let me rotate the linear gradient okay so you can i'm going to do negative 45 degrees okay so that it starts um let's see I'm going to do 135 degrees okay so that it starts from the top all right and that looks pretty good if you want you can add another um, color primary okay and that looks pretty good and I hope that that makes sense I hope you understand this some things I just explained practically okay so I hope you understand that now I want these testimonials to be a slider okay to be like this okay just like in the finished project okay so to do that we are going to use swiper js okay so go to swiperjs.com click get started and then uh, we are going to use the CDN okay so right here I'm going to grab the CSS go into my HTML and then paste that in the head okay um, let's see let me leave a comment I'm going to paste the swiper JS all right so that is the swiper JS let's get the scripts or the javascript as well make sure you have both for it to actually work and let's paste that here okay and okay so now let's see let me go back to the home page and then i'm going to click demos okay so they have some demos that you can choose from all right so there are different different slides here that you can use but i am going to use uh, i'm going to use this right here okay i'm going to use this so let me click on core So right here each slide so in, in this case each testimonial should have a class of swiper slide okay so let's go back to our code and each article with a class of testimonial here is going to have a class of swiper slide all right so we have that and the parent okay so in this case the parents for each of these testimonials is going to be this div okay so i'm just going to go back the parents should have a class of swiper wrapper so let me copy that and paste it here okay and the parents of this as well should have a class and that class is going to be my swiper okay so i'm going to copy and then paste it here So we have this now let me go back refresh and nothing happens yet okay so let's go to the core and copy the javascript to make this actually work so i'm just going to copy this come into my html now i could paste this in the main js um, file right but this slide or the slide is only going to be in the home page or on this home page so that is why i'm just going to paste it in this script okay so now we have our slides okay as you can see here all right you can keep it like this but I want to make some changes okay so the slice per view on mobile is going to be one 
slice per view on mobile is going to be one okay so that looks good but i want to have some kind of media query okay so anything bigger than mobile so that is on tablets and then on bigger desktops we are going to have um breakpoints okay so let's see let me leave a comment here so anything above 600 pixels so anything above uh, mobile phones and we are going to use media queries this media query in css okay so you are going to understand this as we move on anything above or anything bigger than mobile phone should have the slide to be two okay so we are going to show two slides at once all right now let's see all right so on desktops and on tablets it's going to be two but on mobile phones it's going to be one okay and you can experiment with this okay so i actually prefer this this looks pretty good so i'm just going to leave it like that all right now notice in the finished projects we have some paginations here that we can even click so um, for that let me go back to the core and grab the pagination let me go to the markup again and i'm going to paste it here okay and we have that pagination and there's more to swiper js okay so if you want you can go to the APIs and then read everything that you need to know about Swiper JS. But for now, that is enough for this project. So let me close everything up and let's move on to the next section, which is going to be the footer section. Now, for the footer section, I don't want to waste too much time here. So um, let's see. So we are going to have it inside a footer tag as you can see here and inside of it we are going to have the container class and then a footer container class as well right and we are going to have four sections as you can see here in the finished project okay so one two three four so the footer one is going to have the logo and then this paragraph here the footer two is going to have the perma links okay to the various pages that we have on this website footer three is going to have some privacy pages and then footer four is going to have some details or some contact details and socials okay our social media links all right so that is all for the footer section now i want to have a copyright so copyright let me so footer copy right okay let me put that inside a small tag and that is all for the footer section okay let me copy a comment here All right so that is for the footer section let's see what we have from the markup okay so this is all we have from the markup so let's go to our css so let's get a footer class or we can even do footer okay because we are using the footer tag all right so here and even with this i don't need this class okay i'm just going to remove the class i don't need it we only have one footer so all right so the background here is going to be the bg1 let's give it a pattern top of five frame and put this side by side so that we see what's going on
all right a pattern top of 5 rem i'm going to change the font size to 0 0.9 rem okay now i'm going to grab the container so footer container and then i'm going to display grid the grid template columns is going to repeat four times one fr okay so 25 percent for each direct element inside of the container class let me give a gap of five frame between them now i want to push every h4 away from its element okay so i'm going to get the footer container and then every direct dev and then the h4 inside of it okay i'm going to give that a margin bottom of 1.2 rem so this is what i'm styling that's the footer one paragraph and here i'm going to give that a margin of one rem for the top and then zero for the left and right two rem for the bottom okay so we have that let me actually remove this okay let me make that zero i'm going to set the margin bottom to 0 0.7 rem here i'm going to get all the links inside of it and give them a hover effect so on hover i want the text decoration to be underlined okay that's what i want now let's get the socials for the footer four so the socials we give that a class of footer socials okay that has a class of footer socials so here i want to display them flex i'm going to give them a gap or give a gap between them a gap of one rem font size here is going to be bigger so 1.2 rem a margin top of 2 rem okay copyright that we have at the bottom i'm going to style that so that is that has a class of footer copyright i'm going to give that a text align of center a margin top of four rem a pattern 1.2 rem for the top and bottom and then zero for the left and right and a border top a border top of one pixel solid color bg2 okay there we have it all right so our desktop version for this website is done okay the desktop version is done as you can see here so let's head to the responsive design okay um i think i may have to change some things around here let me go back to the css and change this real quick the part in here is too small okay so i'm going to make some changes there that is category section um i'm going to change this to 32 rem and that is that is okay okay that is good all right so let's move on to the responsive design okay right now as you can see it doesn't look good on small devices or on small screens it doesn't look good so let's take care of that and we are going to have two uh, media queries okay we are going to have one for tablets and then we are going to have another for mobile phones okay so let's first start with the tablets media queries let me leave a comment here this is going to be for tablets
so at media screen and max width of 1024 pixels we want to have a different style for our website okay so anything below this anything below one 1024 pixels is going to have this style so for us to see the breakpoints i'm just going to give the background the body a red background okay so that we can see the breakpoints all right so this is the breakpoints right here okay so that's going to be about the size of a big tablet okay so let's start with that all right so now that we know the breakpoints let's move on and give our tablets some styling okay so the first thing i'm going to to do is to get the container class the general container class and then change the width okay so this is going to be the container width md okay or for medium that is for medium devices and that is i think this this is it, okay so this is 90 90 percent okay now let's move on we are going to change the font size for our h1 so on tablets they are going to be two rem font size for our h2s let me get the h2s the font size is going to be 1.7 rem our h3s are going to have a font size of 1.4 rem and then the h4s are going to have font size of 1.2 rem okay so those are the general styles that we have and let's proceed to the navbar okay i want the navbar to be a drop down so now this time you're going to have so remember the hamburger icon and then the close icon that we hit on desktop devices and this time you're going to show them okay so that we can click on them and then show our drop down menu all right so let's move on to the navbar let me leave a comment here So right here, I'm going to get the buttons in the nav bar, and then I'm going to display them in line block, okay? They are going to have a transparent background. So background is going to be transparent. The font size for them is going to be 1.8 rem, and then a color of the white color, okay? So color white. Come on. Okay, I have a typo. So the color is going to be color white okay all right so we have our buttons now i want them to look clickable okay so here i'm going to change the cursor to be pointer okay i want them to look clickable all right so from there let's target the you know what i won't need the close button right away okay we are only going to need the hamburger button for the start so let me get the close button and we give that an id of close menu btn okay so i'm just going to display none for now all right now let's target the nav menu so we give that a class of nav underscore underscore menu And then a rise of five percent okay and i'm going to explain okay so the reason why i'm giving it a right of five percent is because the container itself is 90 percent okay so that gives the right side or the margin on the right and then the margin on the the margin on the left here is five percent and the margin on the right is also five percent all right so here i'm pushing this let me give that a background so that you see what i'm talking about okay so this is going to be exactly five percent from the right side okay so i hope that makes sense now the height for this nav menu is going to be fit content so it's going to fit exactly the contents inside of it and then the width is going to be 18 rem let's give it a flex direction remember this already displayed flex okay on the desktop version so here we are just going to give it a flex direction of column and then remove the gap okay so the gap is going to be zero 
so that is what we have so far now let's target the nav i um the li's inside of it so nav menu and then the li let's give them a width of 100 percent a height of 5.8 rem okay so that is what we have and um let's see we are going to have some animation but for now let's target the nav menu and then the anchor tags inside the li's okay those are going to have a background primary box shadow of negative 4 rem for the x axis 6 rem for the y axis 10 rem for the blur and an rgba 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.6 let's give it a width of 100 percent a height of 100 percent as well and here i'm going to display grid okay so you let me quickly show you so this is what we have right now okay but i'm going to display grid just so i can place items to the center okay so this text is going to be exactly in the middle of its container okay so we have this all right let's give this a hover effect so let me copy um paste and we are going to give it a hover effect okay come on hover so on hover i want the background to be color bg2 and then the color itself the text is going to be color white okay so we have the hover effect which is pretty smooth all right so we have this tiled now so i think we can go ahead in the javascript let me go to the javascript and then add the functionality to toggle this okay so when we click this then you know what this is going to be displayed none at the beginning okay so this by default is going to be none it is not going to show what so when we come to the web page this is how it's going to look like okay but when we click this we want it to show so we are going to use javascript for that let me make this a little bigger so here i'm going to get this icon or this button i'm going to get the nav menu itself and then the close button as well okay so um, let's see all right so i'm going to get the nav menu first so query selector and then we give that a class of nav underscore underscore menu right so that is the nav menu let me duplicate this twice you're going to get the menu btn that is the menu button and we gave that an id of open menu btn okay and then we are going to get the close btn as well that is the close button and we give that an id as well of close menu btn let me quickly show you that okay so these are the ids for the open and close menu and this is the menu itself okay and this is the class that we got for the menus the menu all right so first we want to be able to click this and then show the menu okay so i'm going to get the menu btn and then add an event listener on that there's going to be a click event and on click we want to run this anonymous function here okay this arrow function so on click as i said i want to get the menu and then change the display to be block okay that is what i want to do um, actually i'm going to make that flex all right so let's try that i click and then i have my menu okay but notice i can't close it yet okay that is because we are not even showing our close button so when i click this i want this to disappear and then replace it with the close button okay so when i click i want to get the close btn and then set the style display for that to be inline block okay that is the close button and then as i said i want the menu button to disappear so the style display for the menu button here is going to be none 
and that is all we have to do to show this all right so let's try that again i click my menu button disappears is replaced with the close button and then my menu itself also shows okay right so that is what we have done now we want to be able to close it okay so um let's see i'm going to create a new function here so here i want to change this to none this is going to be displayed none and this is going to be displayed in line block okay so we are going to be able to close this okay but before that happens we have to add an event listener on the close button so i'm going to get the close btn and add an event listener on that that is going to be a click event okay and i'm going to so on click i'm just going to um, call the close now all right so let's try that it should be able to close um show and close the nav menu okay good now i want to have some animation okay for this i want this to animate in i don't want, i don't want it to just pop up so let's go back to uh style sheets or css and give this some cool animation so here i'm going to set a keyframe for our animation so as keyframes and i'm going to call this animate nav items okay so that is the name of the animation and here from zero percent i want to have an animation and then it will go to a hundred percent okay so this is going to be the start of the animation and the end of the animation you can do from and two as well okay it's going to be the same thing but i'm going to use um zero percent and then a hundred percent all right so what do i want to do um i want this each of them to spin from the top right okay i want like for them to um you let you let, let's just do it some things are just difficult to explain so yes I'm going to use the transform property here and rotate our uh, li's on the z axis okay you're going to rotate them it's going to start from 90 degrees and it's going to end at zero degrees okay so right here they are at zero degrees but they are going to start from 90 and then come to zero okay so they are going to come like this they're going to come like that so let's put the animation on the elements that we want to animate so let's call the animation property and the name of this keyframe or the animation is animate nav item it's going to take 400 milliseconds let me do one second for now and it's going to be linear forwards okay and forwards means a short end at the end state of the keyframe okay so let's see and that's how it is right now but I, I don't want it to spin or to rotate from the middle okay so here i'm going to change the transform origin to be from to be here that is the top right so the transform origin is going to be at the top right so let's try that again and this how it looks now all right so that is our animation there that looks pretty weird but we are going to correct that so um one thing i want to do is to delay some of the nav items okay so the first one comes in it takes a while before the second one comes in and then the third one comes in like that so here let me grab the let me grab this and then let's get the second element and we are going to put animation delay on this okay so this is going to delay by um let's say two seconds 
2s let me do the same for the third one and then the fourth one we have four elements there so the third one is going to delay by four seconds and this is going to delay by um actually let me make this three seconds okay and this is going to be four seconds okay that's the fourth element so the fourth item so let's try we have to set an opacity okay so they are not going to be visible at the start they are only going to be visible when they are animated okay and at the end state here i'm going to set the opacity to be one and i hope i'm making some sense here because some things are just hard to explain okay so this is the animation we have now because so the first element comes in the second comes the third comes and then the fourth right you get the idea now i'm going to change the duration and then the delays that we have so the duration is going to be 400 milliseconds and the delays are going to be 200 for the fourth one okay so this is the third one this is the second one so let's try and this is the animation we have okay i think i think this actually looks good okay this is not bad but this is the finished project okay if you want to have this same animation then we are going to do some more things so here i'm going to rotate on the x axis as well i personally think this is okay okay this is not a bad animation at all but if you want more or if you want it to look exactly like the finished project we are going to rotate on the x axis 90 degrees for for the start and then scale and then scale um our item 0 0.1 okay so it's going to be small at the start and then it's going to be bigger at the end okay so here is going to be zero degrees on the x-axis and then the scale is going to be one okay so i'm going to click and we have this okay just like in the finished project all right so that is for our nav bar that is for our nav bar and that geez that took long okay so let's move on to the header okay let's move on to style the header section on tablets okay so let me put this as a lip side by side and let me get this comments i'm going to get this comments and then paste it here this is going to be the header section so let me get the header and then give it a height here i'm going to make the height 52 viewport height and then the margin bottom give it a margin bottom of four rem okay all right so that is what we have doesn't look so good but let's get the header container and give it a gap of zero and a padding bottom of three rem okay so that is all for this header section let's move on to the next section which is going to be the category section okay so here i'm going to get the categories class and then give it a height of auto okay so let me quickly show you so we can actually make it fit content and it's going to fit exactly the height of the content or we can just do auto it's going to do the same thing okay all right remember we get we gave it a fixed height okay in on the desktop version but here we are setting it to auto so that it takes care of the whole contains all right so let's move on and then grab the container so the categories container the great templates columns for this is going to be 1fr okay and then let me give a gap okay a gap of three rem so that we have some space here I'm going to get the categories left and then set the margin right to zero. Okay. All right. Now let's move on from there. We are going to the 
popular courses section let's get to the popular courses all right so here we are going to change the let me first get the courses class and then give it a margin top of zero okay remember we gave it a margin top of i think 10 rem on the desktop but here we are going to set it to zero let me save and we have that now let me get the container class courses container and then change the grid templates columns here to be one fr one fr okay so it's going to be 50 50 50 percent on the left side and then 50 on the right all right so that is all for the courses now let's go to the next section which is going to be the Katia um, frequently asked questions okay let's get that and let me get the container directly okay here i'm going to change the grid templates columns to be 1fr so 100 percent and then let me change the pattern for each frequently asked question okay so the pattern here is going to be 1.5 rem make it smaller all right and that is all for the frequently asked questions section the next is going to be the testimonials section and i think that actually looks pretty good so let's just leave it like that okay i'm going to copy this comment paste it here and let's get the footer the footer section so let's get the footer container and then change the grid template columns here to be one fr one fr that is 50 percent and um i think that actually looks good okay that is okay that's all right and that is it we are done for the tablet media query for this home page okay so let, let, let's see how it actually looks on tablets so this is only how it's going to look on tablets all right this is only how our website is going to look on tablets okay so that is done now let's let's move on to the mobile view or the mobile version okay the mobile media query let's move on to that all right so i'm going to leave a comment here i'm going to do 600 pixels okay some phones these days are very big so that should be good okay so now let me see um the breakpoints i'm just going to check the breakpoints real quick all right so that is the breakpoints okay right here so anything below this is going to have the styles that we are going to set okay right so right here i'm going to change the container width to be the container width for smaller devices um so let's get the nav menu that is the only thing we are going to start here and here the right is going to be three percent okay and that is because the container width here is i think 94 percent okay so that leaves six percent which when divided by two is going to be three percent for the right side and then three percent for the left side okay so from there let's move on to the header that is the only style we are going to have for the nav bar most of the styles are taken care of in the tablet version okay so here we are going to target the header it's going to have a height a height of 100 viewport height now let's get the header container and set the grid template columns to be one fr okay we are going to text align let me scroll to the top so that we see um what's going on i'm going to text align to the center 
and a margin top of negative two rem okay uh yo let me remove this let me make it zero yeah that doesn't look bad all right now let's move on and i'm going to target the p okay i'm going to target this so the header header left and in the paragraph header left and then the paragraph inside of it i'm going to give it a margin bottom of 1.3 rem all right so from there we are going to get the let's move on to the categories okay um categories let's move on to that and i'm going to get the categories right and set the grid templates columns for these templates columns one fr one fr so two fractions that is 50 percent each and the gap here is going to be 0 0.7 rem okay all right so we have that and let's get each category okay so each article with a class of category we are going to get and then change the pattern to be one rem and the border radius is going to be one rem here okay so we have that now i'm going to get the icon okay so the category icon and give that a margin top of four pixels save and nothing changes that is because we have to display this to be a nine block okay and that works all right now let's move on to the next section which is this popular courses section all right so here what do we want to do um let's get the courses container class and then I want this to be a hundred percent each of these is going to be a hundred percent the width of its container so the grid templates columns they are already set to grid that is the display so the grid templates columns here is going to be one fr or a hundred percent and that is all for this section okay let's move on to the next section which is going to be the frequently asked questions section and i think that looks good so let's move on to this section that is the testimonials section so the testimonials section here is going to let me get the body okay the body is going to have a pattern of 1.2 rem and that is all we need now i'm going to get the footer which is the last thing we are going to start here and you can even leave this okay that is the testimonial section i think the pattern here looks pretty good already but you know let's just so here on the footer section i'm going to get the footer container change the grid templates columns here to be one fr okay so it was 50 50 but now it's 100 percent for each of the direct children of the footer container they are going to be text aligned to the center and then the gap between them is going to be two rem okay so we have that i'm going to get the footer one paragraph that is this i'm going to get that set the margin to be one rem or two let's get the footer socials which are these let's put them in the middle so footer socials you're going to justify content to the center and that is all for the media queries for mobile phones okay that is all for the mobile phone media queries now let's see how it actually looks on a phone okay so we have this and this looks um, pretty good okay this looks good everything working perfectly all right so now we are done with our home page okay we are 100 percent done with our home page so 
let's move on to creating the other pages okay we are first going to start with our about page now on the about page you can see we have a blank page okay the page is blank so what we are going to do is to copy from the nav bar okay we are going to copy that and then paste it inside the about page let me paste and i'm going to copy from the footer down as well okay so let's get down here and from the footer down i'm going to copy all that code and then paste it here okay and paste that we are not going to need this um swiper js code okay so i'm just going to remove that as well and also remove the swiper js um javascript cdn that we have we also have a swiper js css link here i'm just going to remove that as well and we have a clean page okay for our about okay so we have our heading so we have our nav bar and then the footer to see the difference i'm just going to paste or i'm, I'm just going to do a lorem 3000 just so we can see um everything well okay so this is the footer and this is the header so that's our about page now in the finished project let me refresh this in the finished project here on the about page we are going to have two sections okay so we are going to have this achievements section and then the team section as well okay so that is what we are going to have let's start with our achievement section so let me remove this let's go to the project we are working on let's make this bigger okay so we are going to start with our achievements okay our achievement section so section i'm going to give this a class of about achievements and inside of it we are going to have our general container class and another class of about achievements container okay all right so and in here we are going to have a left and then a right side okay so about achievements left let me duplicate and then we are going to have the right okay so the left side is going to have the image that is this image and then the right side is going to have this title the sub side and then this cards okay so this left side is only going to have an image let's go into our images folder and then get the about the about achievements image it's an svg so that is it and here is it okay all right so on the right side we are going to have an h1 that says achievements okay we are going to have a p a paragraph let's do lorem 30 that should be good all right and then we are going to have our cards okay so let's put that inside a div with a class of achievements cards plural and each card is going to have is going to be an article or it's going to be inside an article tag with a class of achievement card okay this is how each card is going to look like okay we are going to have an icon an h3 and then a paragraph okay so here we are going to have the icon so let me put that inside a span with a class of achievements icon and let me get this icon real quick so let's go back to icon scouts okay so this is the icon i used so i'm going to get that and then paste it in here that is my icon i'm going to have an h3 and this is going to say courses an h3 so one of 450 plus courses okay that is for one card 
so there's one card i'm just going to duplicate it twice to have the other cards so let's just fill in the contents from here the second one is going to be all right save and we have this okay now i'm going to change the icons the first the second one is going to be user 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 okay so i used this so i'm just going to copy and then replace this with it the next is going to be award so let me just copy this you can let me even use this trophy okay and then paste it all right so we have that markup and that is all for the achievements markup okay so we are going to go to our about css okay and we should make sure this is linked so let's go up let's go to the head duplicate this and then we are going to link our about css okay and that is where we are going to have these tiles right so now let's tell our about section that is the achievement section all right so let's get our achievements about achievements and let's give it a margin top of three rem okay let's push it down three rem now let's get the about achievements container and we are going to display grid okay we have two direct um, divs inside of that we have the left and then the right so here let's display grid and then the grid templates columns is going to be 40 percent for the left side and then 60 for the right okay so we have this now let me give some gap between them A gap of five frames should be good and let's target this paragraph okay i'm going to get the paragraph so about achievements right and then the direct paragraph inside of it i'm going to give it a margin top of 1.6 rem zero for the left and right and then 2.5 for the bottom all right so we have that let me get the cards okay so all these are inside and about all the achievements cards achievements cards i think and i'm going to display grid let me set the grid templates columns to be repeat three times one fr let me give some gap okay so a gap of 1.5 frame should be good all right now i'm going to get the about i'm going to get the achievement card okay so the individual cards have a class of achievement card and let me give them a background of color bg1 okay that is the background i'm going to give them a pattern of 1.6 rem a border radius of one rem and i'm going to text align everything to the center okay so we have that um let's see let me i want to have a hover effect okay so let me just copy this and on hover i want the background to be color bg2 and then we are going to have a box shadow zero on the x axis three rem on the y axis three rem for the blur and an rgba of zero 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 and then 0 0.3 or 30 percent um opacity let me add a transition here okay we are going to use that transition variable from the styles css okay and we have a smooth hover effect now let's style the um let's see i'm going to style the paragraphs inside of here let me first get the icons okay so i'm going to get the icons um i think i gave them a class of achievement icon okay so each of these icons have that class 
so let's start that let me give them a background for now they are all going to have a background of color danger um let's give them pattern of 0 0.6 rem a border radius of one rem they are all going to be displayed in line block and i'm going to give them margin bottom of two rem let's save and we have this okay they are too small so i'm going to change the font size for the icons to be two rem to make them a little bigger okay all right so that's what we have now i want them to have different colors okay i want the icons to have different colors so i'm going to get my achievements achievements card and then the icon inside of each of them okay i'm going to get the icon um, let's see i'm going to get the second one let me make reference to the finish project okay so the the second one is going to be success and then the third one is going to be primary so i'm going to get the I'm going to use the solo selector and child and select the second element or the second card here and i'm grabbing the icon inside of it okay and right here i'm going to change the background to be color success uh what is wrong color success why is it not changing all right let me do same for the third one and that is going to be color primary okay okay so we have all three now let me push this down that is the paragraph here so um let's see achievements card and then the p i'm going to push that down with the margin top of one room all right and we have our cards okay we have our beautiful cards all right so we are done with our achievements on the desktop okay we are going to do the media queries but before that we are going to have the team section okay so there is going to be the team section so let's head to the markup let's go to our markup um about let me copy a comment here and then paste it down here this is going to be the end of the achievements all right so this team section is going to be very simple so we are going to have the image of the person the name and then the or the info okay so the image the info and then the socials okay so that's basically how we are going to structure this so let's get back here and then a section with a class come on section with a class of team okay let's have an h2 here that says meet our team all right now down here we are going to have the container class so container container with a team container class as well and each team member is going to have is going to be inside an article with a class of team underscore underscore member okay and we are going to have the team member image so let me let me get that image real quick so inside our images folder i'm going to get the team tm1 okay so team member one that is the first person all right so that is the image that we have we are going to have the info okay so team member info and that is going to have an h4 with the name of the person or the name of the team member Shatawale. and then a paragraph for the title okay or oh, anything that you want to put there all right and then the socials okay so we are going to have the socials of that team member as well 
and that is going to be inside a div with a class of team member socials okay so we are going to have the first one is going to go to instagram so instagram slash the person's handle okay instagram.com slash the handle and this is going to be an icon okay so let me get the instagram icon grab this and then paste it in here okay you can make it open in a new tab okay by giving it a target of underscore blank and this is going to make this open in a new tab okay so let me duplicate this twice we are going to have instagram we are going to have twitter and then let me see let me get the twitter icon as well let me replace this with a twitter icon and we are going to have uh, linkedin as well linkedin so let's get the linkedin icon let me get this replace this with the linkedin icon okay so this is all for one member okay so this is all for one member we have the title and then the name here we have the socials here we have the image as well okay so that is for one member and we are going to have about um, 10 members so here i'm just going to copy this and then duplicate it let me see the number we have we have five uh, four here and then four there so eight okay so i'm going to copy this duplicate it seven more times one two three four five six seven and i'm going to change the content for this real quick so i'm going to change the image the name and then the title okay so that is all i'm going to do but for you you may want to change the um the link for all of the members that you have so this would go to instagram slash the specific members uh, instagram handle okay but for now we are just going to change the image the name and then the title okay so let me do that real quick all right so this so this is the markup after making the changes okay let me copy the comments um here i'm going to copy this and then this will be the end of the team section okay so let's head to the mark let's see what we have first okay so this is what we got from the markup and now let's tell this okay let's make this look good so let's go to our css our about css and i'm going to leave a comment here there's going to be in the team styles all right so here let me put this side by side okay let me actually close this main js and all that all right so let's get a team class that is the section and give that a background of color bg1 okay and then a box shadow of inset zero zero and then three room for the blur rgba zero 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 and then zero points then let's make this zero point five all right so we have that inset now let's get the team container the team container class and i'm going to display this grid obviously and the grid templates columns is going to be repeat four times one fr so 25 percent each okay 25 25 25 let me give a gap between them so a gap of two rams should be good right now let's target each team member class and give them a pattern let me first give them a background of color bg2 a pattern of 2rem a border 
of one pixel solid and it's going to be transparent for now all right so we have this so we have the border the border radius let's give it a border radius of one rem oh well, actually you know what let me just remove this border radius okay i want it to look boxy all right so i'm going to have a hover effect here okay so on hover i want the background to be transparent transparent okay and the border color here is going to change the border color here is going to be color primary okay so on hover we are going to have the background set to transparent and the border color is going to be that now i want this to be smooth so i'm going to have a transition here let's give it our variable transition all right now let's style the info okay even before that let's give some styling to our images okay so so by default um our image should be desaturated okay so i'm going to get the team member image and then the image inside of it i want that to be desaturated by default so let's give it a filter and then saturation of zero okay they are going to be desaturated but on hover on hover of the card on hover of the team member on hover of any team member i want the image to be saturated okay so when we hover over any of this i want the saturation to be a hundred percent yo why did i close that okay let's save all right so on hover we have the saturation for the images now i'm going to get the team member info okay the team member info remember that has the name and then the title okay so i'm going to get that and then anything or everything inside of it that is the h4 and then the paragraph are going to have a text align of center and then a margin top of 1.4 okay so we have that now i want the paragraph that is the title to be lighter okay so i'm going to give it a color of color light okay so it's a little grayed out all right so now let's target the socials okay i want it to be here and then give it some transition so on hover of any of the cars the socials is going to animate from the right and then come in here okay so let's style let's first style our socials team member socials let me give that a position of absolute it's going to be 50 percent from the top okay and it is lost from the screen and that is because the parents for this socials should be or should have a position of relative okay all right so now we have uh socials there all right and let me position that to the right side i'm going to display flex and the flex direction is going to be column i'm going to give it a background of color primary and a border radius of one rem for the top left zero for the top right zero for the bottom right and then one rem for the bottom left okay so we have that now i'm going to get the anchor tags okay so each of the links each of the icons are inside an anchor tag so i'm going to get those i'm going to get the anchor tag and then give it a pattern of one rem all right so we have this now this is pushed from the top 50 percent and i want it to be exactly in the middle okay vertically in the middle so i'm going to transform 
and translate on the y-axis negative 50 percent all right so it's exactly where i want it to be i want to add a box shadow as well so a box shadow let's do negative 2 rem for the x axis 0 for the y axis 2 rem for the blur and then an rgba of 0 0 0 and then 0 0.3 okay all right so we have that now i don't want these socials to be there by default okay i want them to appear when we hover over any of the cards or any of the members so right here i'm going to set the right for the socials to be negative 100 percent negative 100 percent which is going to make it go off screen okay and i'm going to set the overflow for the card um that is the team member each team member is going to have an overflow of heading so on hover of any of the team members um let's see team member hover on hover of any of the team members once we get the team member social setting this time the right is going to be zero okay so it's going to come from the right straight to this part okay this position okay and i want this to be smooth so i'm going to add a transition of the transition variable that we have um and i think that is all for the team section okay i think that is all for the team section it doesn't quite look like the finished project with this border radius and all that but i think what we just created actually looks better all right so now let's get um, let's get to the responsive design for this about page okay so um let's see let me leave a comment here media queries we are going to start with the tablets okay so at media screen and maximum width of 1024 pixels to see the breakpoints i'm just going to give the body a background of red so i'm going to shrink this just to see the breakpoints okay so this is the breakpoints all right so um what do i want to do here i'm going to get the about achievements and then the margin this time is going to the margin top is going to be two rem i'm going to get the container that is the about achievements container about achievements container come on okay i'm going to set the grid templates columns to be one fr the gap is going to be 4m this time okay so we have this now i'm going to get the left side that is this image i'm going to get the image container so about left and i'm going to give that a width of 80 percent and that should be in the middle so the margin is going to be zero or two okay now let me get the team container so let's get down we are done with the achievement section so let's get the team container class and the great templates columns here is going to be repeat three times one fr okay and the gap here i think the gap is okay oh um the gap here was mm, the gap here was two now i'm going to make it 1.5 1.5 frame all right let me get the team member the team member class and then reduce the padding to be one rem 
okay so this is what we have on tablets all right now let's have another media queries for mobile okay for mobile phones okay so it is going to be 600 pixels and once again to see the breakpoints i'm just going to make the background red okay so there is a breakpoint for mobile and here i'm going to get the achievement cards and the great templates columns here is going to be one fr one fr okay I'm going to give a gap of 0 0.7 rem and i'm going to get the team container the great templates columns here is going to be 1fr 1fr so 50 50 and the gap is going to be 0 0.7 rem here as well okay now let me get each team member and set the padding to zero now i'm going to get the team member and then the paragraph the paragraph inside of it and set the margin bottom to be 1.5 rem and this looks pretty good okay this looks good all right so this is how our about page looks okay this is how it looks on tablets okay so this is how it looks on tablets now let's see how it looks on mobile and this is how it looks on mobile all right so our next page is going to be the courses page okay let's go to our courses page all right so just like in the about i'm just going to copy from the footer down i'm just going to copy that and then paste it inside our courses so our courses um courses courses html I'm going to paste that here that's going to be the footer and then i'm going to copy from the nav okay from the nav bar i'm going to copy and then paste that here as well save and then refresh i have the nav bar and then the footer okay all right and this um courses section this courses section is going to be very simple so let me just go into my index HTML. remember we had a course a popular courses section right so let me just grab some of the popular courses um, that's below the categories okay so i'm just going to grab this section and then paste it in the courses in the courses page okay save and then refresh and we have some courses all right now i'm just going to duplicate the courses that we have here and as you can see here we have only three courses okay we have only three courses here so i'm just going to duplicate and then change the the image and then the titles that we have okay so i'm with this one course i'm just going to copy this and then duplicate it All right so these are the courses that we have okay i just changed the image and then the titles for each of them okay and there's a lot of courses okay we could actually use javascript to generate this but i just want to hard code it for today all right so these are the courses that we have and um let's see i removed the h2 as well okay so we don't have that title all right so let's see what we have and this what we have in or on this courses page okay this is what we have on this courses page and i'm going to remove this margin that we have at the top here so let me just and we don't even need this courses css okay we don't even need this that is because 
everything is styled for us from the styles that we imported okay this styles css that we imported from or we've, we've linked everything is styled on the popular courses section of the home page okay so we are just using those same styles here on the courses page as well okay so here i'm just going to um style and then i'm going to set the margin top for this courses class i'm just going to get the courses class and then the margin top for this is going to be one rem let's see and now we don't have that margin okay and that is all for this courses page that is all for the courses page all right so the last page that we are going to create is going to be the contact page okay so this contact page uh, let me show you from the finished projects okay so this is going to be our contact page so we have this aside and then we have the form okay and i'm not going to write the markup for this aside okay it's going to take too long so i'm just going to paste in the code for this and then walk you through okay but we are going to write the form from scratch okay so let's move on to let's go to the markup and once again i'm just going to copy from the navbar and then paste it inside the contacts okay so contact atm i'm just going to paste that in and i'm going to copy from the uh let's see i'm going to copy from the footer section as well from the footer down i'm just going to copy that and then paste it here all right refresh and we should have a number and then a footer for the contact section all right as i said i'm not going to write the markup for the aside or this right here i'm not going to write the markup for that so i'm just going to paste in the markup okay but before that let me put everything inside a section with a class of contact and we are going to have our container class okay everything is going to wrap in this and then we are going to have another another class contact container okay all right so i'm just going to paste in the aside um okay so this is it just our contact information okay that is inside an aside tag that is what i just pasted in all right and we are going to have our contact form here okay so it's going to be a form and our action let me we are going to take care of the action for now i'm just going to remove it so we are first going to have so our first name and then the last name is going to be wrapped inside the david class of form name and then we are going to have our first name which is going to be a type of text and input with type of text the name here is going to be first name and we are, we are going to understand why we are giving it this name later on okay we are going to understand that a placeholder of first name so that is what anyone is going to see in the inputs field and this is going to be required okay just some front-end validation so that people don't submit empty fields i'm going to duplicate it and then this is going to be for the last name and inside the placeholder is going to say last name okay there's a type of text as well now below this we are going to have the email so input with the type of email the name is going to be email or let's say email address and the name that we are giving each input is going to make sure or each field is going to make sure we know exactly the field the text is coming from okay or the message is coming from we are going to understand that once we add the functionality of receiving it inside our email all right so that is the name the placeholder here is going to be and this is going to be re required okay and this is going to have a name of message okay we are not going to have any id 
no columns but the rows i'm just going to set it to um, seven seven rows and this should be required as well okay so that is the message input um, let's give it a placeholder let's give it a placeholder okay and lastly we are going to have a button to submit this form okay so the type is going to be submit and it's going to say send message okay so let's give this button some classes so a class of btn and btn primary to make it a button okay um yeah so that is all for the markup for this form okay that is all for this form markup and now let's head to the css and give this form some styling before that i want to be able to, i want to make sure i've linked this to the contact css file okay that we have here so i want to make sure that is linked okay and make sure it comes after the styles css okay as you can see here all the pages make sure they come after the style css all right so let's go into our contact css and give this some styling all right so here i'm going to get the contact container class i'm going to give that a background of color bg1 okay that is the background now let's give it a pattern of forum i'm going to display this to be grid and the grid template columns is going to be 40 percent for the left side and then 60 60 for the um for the right side okay for the context form let's give it a gap of four rem and a height rem okay a fixed height of 30 rem now i'm going to give it a margin of seven rem for the top auto for the left and right and seven for the actually let me just make it seven um seven auto okay so this is going to be top and bottom and then left and right let me give it a border radius of one rem okay now let's move on to the aside so let me quickly show you the aside code that i pasted i don't think i showed you that so this is the code for the aside okay where is it okay so from here to here that is the aside okay so you can pause this video and then watch the code carefully but now that's what we are going to style so um let's get it so contact aside and then the background here is going to be color primary The pattern is going to be 3 rem. The border radius is going to be 1 rem. And um, let's see. I'm going to position this relative. And the bottom is going to be 11 or 10 rem from the bottom. Okay. It's going to be 10 rem from the bottom. Um, all right. Let's just leave it like that for now. Let me get this image and then resize it. Okay. So the side image i'm going to give it a width of 12 rem and a margin bottom of 2 rem okay so we have that now i'm going to get this h2 okay this h2 right here so aside or contact aside okay and i'm going to get the h2 i'm going to text align that to the left and then give it a margin bottom of 1 rem so we have that i'm going to get the paragraph as well so our side p and then the font size here is going to be reduced to 0 0.9 rem 
or it's going to be decreased and then the margin is going to be the margin bottom is going to be two rem okay so we have that now let me get the uh let's see i'm going to get this okay and that is inside a ul that is an added list with a class of details contact details that is the class we give it so let's target that so contact underscore underscore details and right here i'm just going to get the li straight okay i'm going to get the li's and here i'm going to display them to be grid and give them a gap of one rem i'm going to align text to the center and then give them a margin bottom of one rem as well this is supposed to be different i have to display this flex okay this this has to be flex all right now let's move on to the socials okay so contact socials i'm going to display flex gap give that a gap of 0 0.8 rem and imagine bottom or imagine top of 3 rem okay so that is our socials and i'm going to target the links each of these is inside an anchor tag so i'm going to target them so contact social set and the links inside of it they are going to have a background of color bg2 okay that is the background let's give them a pattern of 0 0.5 frame a border radius of 50 percent and a font size of 0 0.9 frame. okay so we have them now we are going to have some hover effects so on hover i want the background to be transparent okay so let me add a transition here all right so we have that and that is all for this aside here okay that is all for this now let's tell the form okay let's tell our form so i can make this bigger leave a comment here let me copy this comment and this is going to be the form i'm going to get the contact form okay that is or you can just do you can just do form because we are only using one form on this whole website but we gave it a class of contacts form that is why i'm grabbing that okay um i don't think i did so i'm just going to do that so contact form okay you can even use the form tag if you want you can use this since we have only one form but i'm just going to use the class so here i'm going to display that to be flex and the flex direction is going to be column okay give that a gap of 1.2 rem and imagine right all right now let me get the form name okay we, we had a class of form underscore underscore name that has the first name and then the last name input here i'm going to display them flex and the gap is going to be 1.2 rem as well all right now let me get all the inputs okay so contact form and then the inputs the inputs with a type of text here we are going to give them a width of 50 percent and that is all okay now let's get um i'm just going to grab this we are going to start give some style to all the inputs and then the text area okay the text area remember we have only one text area we can even omit this or remove that and then just style this okay so all the inputs and then the text areas are going to have a width of a hundred percent a pattern of a pattern of one rem color bg it's going to be color bg okay so we have that the text color is going to be color white
I'm just going to leave the place where it's like that. But I'm going to style this button. Okay, I don't want it to be that big. So I'm just going to grab the contact form and the BTN class inside of it. The width is going to be max content. The cursor is going to be pointer. And the margin top is going to be All right. So our uh, form is styled on the desktop version. Okay, on the desktop. Now we have to do that for media queries. We have to style it for tablets and then mobile phones. So here I'm just going to copy this comment. So it is going to be media queries for tablets. Okay. And the body i'm going to display that now okay just so we can see the breakpoint all right so here is going to be the breakpoint for tablets okay so um what i want to do here is to get the contact class and then give that a pattern of zero a pattern bottom of zero i'm going to comment this out for now but you let's move on so i'm going to get the contact container class and then give that a gap of 1.5 rem a margin top of 3 rem and then i'm going to give it a height of auto let me give it a pattern of 1.5 rem the pattern here is too big so one point uh 1.5 rem should be okay All right, now I'm going to get the contact aside. And then here, the width is going to be auto. The pattern is going to be 1.5 frame. And then the bottom is going to be zero. Okay, so we have this. Let me get the form. Okay, I'm going to get this form. So contact form. And align self to the center going to align itself to the center and the margin right is going to be 1.5 frame all right so we have this and that is for tablets okay that is all for tablets all right now i'm going to copy this paste it down here for phones and our breakpoint here is going to be 600 pixels okay and we should make sure we close this curly brackets all right just to see the breakpoints i'm just going to set the body to a display of none and shrink this okay so here is the breakpoint all right so on mobile what do we want to do or on phones we want to get the container class that is a contact container and change the grid template columns to be one fr save and we have this alignment the gap here should be three rem these are too close that is this info and then the form they are too close so i'm going to give a space of three rem and a margin top of zero all right now i'm going to remove the pattern as well all right so we have this now let me target the contact form okay so contact form margin 0 1.5 rem and then 3 rem okay so 0 for the top 1.5 rem for the left and right and then 3 rem for the bottom um and i want this first name and then the last name to be a hundred percent of the weight so let's see form name here the flex direction is going to be column okay so we have that and i'm going to get the inputs inside of it okay 
the inputs inside of it is going to have a width of 100%. Uh, let's see, type of, all right, so we have this. All right, so that is all for styling this contact page, okay? So we are done styling the contact page. Now it is time for us to implement the functionality okay for us to actually submit or for people to submit messages through this contact form okay and the service you are going to use is form spray so let's go to form spray form spray.io and here i have an account so i'm going to sign in but for you you are going to click get started okay so you are going to sign up but i have an account already so i'm going to sign in okay all right so after creating your account you are going to get a verification email okay and you should enter your real email because that is what you are going to be getting or you are going to be receiving all the emails from your website in so here after verifying your account or your email you come here and then you create a new form as you can see i have some forms here already but i'm going to create a new one okay so click and this is the email i'm going to be receiving all the messages into okay so i'm going to name this form that is the name of the form you can name the project as well all right and here i'm going to create the form okay so you click create form and all you have to do here is to copy this link that it gave you yours is going to be different but this is mine so you just copy this link and you are going to paste it inside the action okay so that is going to be the action for your form so you just write action and then you paste that link in okay and also make sure your form method is post okay this is going to be post so you can just copy that you can just copy this copy and then we are going to paste it in our form here so the method is going to be post and the action is going to be the url that they give us okay and this is really all you need for people to submit messages through your website okay so quickly let's try that let's go to our website refresh and we are going to send our first email first let me check my email just to make sure nothing is there all right so this is the demo from the beginning of the video so i'm just going to remove this or delete it just so we can start a fresh lesson okay so here we are going to enter our name um this is going to be the last name just random text okay just to make sure you know this is legit so gmail.com and our message for the message let me just copy this as the message and i'm going to submit and there my message has been submitted so here in my email you can see i have a new message from the education tutorial form that i just created here on the um, phone spree website okay so we have the first name we have the last name the email of the sender and then the message from the sender okay so this really all you need to be able to receive messages through your website okay but one last thing that i want to show you is to prevent spam so you come here on the settings page and then you scroll down to this recapture and then you want to enable it okay so we are going to enable that and then that should prevent spam okay so um let's see let's go back let me refresh the page let me go to the contact page and this time let's say our name is jendo and we can't submit empty fields okay because of the required keyword that we added to or the required attributes that we added to the fields okay so here the email is going to be this there's the sender's email and this is going to be the message okay 
just type in some random text here i'm going to submit the message and as you can see we have to make sure we are not robots okay so traffic lights um let's see submit bicycle and the message has now been sent okay so we should have a new message as you can see here and this time the name the first name is jane do uh, the first name is jane last name do and then this is the email of the sender and the message from the sender okay so that is how you receive messages from your website let's go back all right so we are done with our website okay we are done with the entire website we've created all the pages and styled them all but as compared to the finished project you can see we have some background texture okay as you can see here we have some background texture so if you want that i think this actually looks clean okay without the texture it looks clean but if you want the texture let's go back to um let me go to the index first and i tried doing this in the styles okay i, I tried doing it in the css but it didn't work for some reason so i just have to do it here okay so here i'm going to open a style tag and then get the body okay the body is going to have a background image and let's get the url okay so here i'm going to go into my images folder and the image i'm going to select is going to be bg texture and that is a pgn um png that is a png file okay that is a png file so it's just a small triangle that repeats okay so let's just see what we have and as you can see we have that okay all right but if you go to the other pages you can see we don't have it so we just have to repeat this for all the pages okay so let me actually make this look cleaner just copy this and then paste it on the or paste it in the other pages okay so here in the about page just going to paste this let's do same for the contact and then the courses page as well okay so here actually we have the styles tag already so i'm just going to copy the body let me put it above the courses and then i can remove this that is all guys let's see what we have So this is our about page okay this the team section of our about page this is the achievement section of our about let's go to our courses page and we have this cool hover effect all right and all these projects were built on this channel okay so if you want to, or if you are interested in building any of this you can check out the channel and then you'll get a tutorial for that all right let's check out the contact page we have the texture everything is working great and here on the home page too we have everything okay everything is looking great now let's see how it all looks on responsive on mobile phones okay so this is how our website looks on mobile phones everything is working perfectly let's check out the responsiveness on tablets and it is looking great okay all right so this is all for the project thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one